Hi, fellow learners. Today I welcome you to another clip on my channel. Today I'll be looking at the inverse power method. In my previous video, I look at the power method and how we can use it to find the dominant adjunct value. Today we'll be looking at the inverse power method. An inverse power method is basically used to find the least adjunct value of a matrix with its corresponding adjunct vector. So let's look into let's dive into it. So first of all, we have a theory which is suppose we have a lambda, which is our adjunct value, and our x, which is the adjunct vector. Suppose lambda and x is an adjunct part of a matrix. If our lambda is not equal to zero then one on lambda and our x is on the adjunct pair of the matrix a inverse so let's look at it so i say suppose our a is is not a singular matrix or non-inverse matrix it's not then we are saying a times x is equal to lambda times x which this idea is for the calculator's work principle or theory so we then pre-multiply our equation 1, pre-multiply by A inverse, and divide the same equation 1 by lambda, which gives rise to equation 2. A, A inverse gives us what? An identity matrix. And then here our lambdas cancel, so we are then left with what? Equation 1, which is 1 on lambda, since our lambda is a scalar. Okay? times x equal to our a inverse. So to find the least adjunct value of a matrix, since we'll be dealing with what inverse of a matrix, we have to check if our matrix is invertible or has an inverse. So the first thing that we do is what when we consider these two matrices, we have to find the determinant of the matrix. So the determinant of the, our a matrix is zero. And then since our A matrix is zero, then it's a singular or non-invertible one matrix. So there's no need for us to work on it. So if you have a matrix which is a square matrix, it's, it's, it's not a square matrix, but it's a rectangular matrix, then we can use the origin, a singular value decomposition to be able to give us a singular value of a matrix. So, so considering our second matrix, which is B, the determinant is equal to one minus one on two, which as long as the determinant is not equal to zero, then it means that it means that matrix has a, an inverse. Then we can say it's not singular or invertible matrix. So the problem that we want to solve is what we want to find the smallest adjunct value of the matrix using the power inverse power method with the initial approximation to be equal to one one. Our x not to be equal to one one. So to before we actually tackle the problem, we want to understand something so that we use it to validate the solution that we'll be having at the end of the lesson. So consider this matrix B that we have here. We first of all obtain our characteristics word equation to be in terms of this is lambda square plus two lambda minus 0 0.5 equal to 0 then we use the almighty formula to help us to get the roots or the solutions of these equations so of which in terms of the magnitude we have a lambda 1 in terms of magnitude our lambda 1 being, being the largest value and our lambda 2 is 0 0.2247 which in other way is the least value uh, least adding value of the matrix so we will at the end of it, we are going to use our solution to ver verify. We use this one to ver verify our solution. Okay. So considering the matrix A that we have here, ma matrix B, we find the inverse of the matrix B, and we have this matrix, these two by two matrix here. Then we go ahead to do our first iteration, which we have our A times X naught, which is, is expressed as this one. Then we have this column vector that we have seen here. We consider what the maximum value in terms of magnitude. We consider the maximum value, which is five. We scale it, and then we give rise to what this column vector that we have seen here in equation seven. We then go ahead based on equation seven. 
we have our x1 so our a times our x1 we multiply it again and it gives us our our this very value that we have seen here we consider we find the maximum value of a2 from this column vector and it is 1 4.44 we scale it and this right to what equation 9 so from equation having obtained our x2 we can now follow the x2 to get x3 for which we have our x a times what our x2 give rise to this column vector that we have seen here we also go ahead to do the scaling and then reduce it of which gives rise to what equation 11 so our x3 to be got to 1.00.82 that is the column vector that we have obtained from for eight x3 we perform our four pi equation the same we will apply a times x3 which gives rise to what equation 12 we consider the maximum value and then we can see we can see we obtain the same thing over and over again so looking at this one when we should go ahead and do the fifth equation we are going to arrive at the same thing so for we, based on this result we can now conclude on it now we have converted so we have obtained the, the approximate what adding smallest adding value so from the theorem that we have seen we have seen now to one over the lambda value which is what 4.46 so is our smallest adding value which is what 0 0.225 so we have come to the end of this lesson and I believe this video is so simple and it has been a great help. Please hit the like button, subscribe, share this video and leave your comment down below. In our next lesson, I hope to bring a video on, I hope to bring a video on this gory sharing or disc. So stay tuned.